Carol McMahon, the executive director of Genesis of Pittsburgh. And this has been one heck of a ride. Um, wonderful things have been going on. Here. It, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of, of Genesis of Pittsburgh and how it started. Um, it all started with the um, Roe versus Wade. And when all that, uh, the abortion issue was, was into play. And um, three women decided that, you know, where they needed, if a girl was pregnant, what kind of help was available to her. And they started a hotline. And this, again, was three women. It was in, a house, in, in one woman's house. And if there were maybe five calls a month, that was a busy month. Um, what we realized, this was, this was in 19, 1975 when this started. And um, I jumped on board on 1976. And, and with that hotline, um, we were realizing there was nowhere really to send them. If there, we, we had a, a pro-life doctor that would see them and, and, and go through, you know, with their pregnancy, at least we had that. But if, um, un unfortunately, in many cases where the girl, when she found out she was pregnant, the family was just very upset with her, and a lot of times she was asked to leave. And what we started was a shepherding um, home where we had a couple families that would take a girl in if she was homeless. And um, as a counselor, I would go to the homes and what would happen is I ended up counseling the, the family even more than I counseled the girl. And plus, she was very um, isolated. And so I kept saying, uh, we need to open a home. We need to open a home. This is just, too, it's too hard on, on, on her. And so in 19, in 19, I guess, 83, no, I know it was 1983, we um, opened Genesis House. And it was uh, the strangest thing. We, it was a five-year plan. We decided in 1973, 1983, excuse me, that it would be in fi within five years we would open up a residential program for pregnant women. And um, with the donor option with United Way, when they started the program where you can designate who you wanted to um, give your money to, your, your donation, um, and the first year, it was 1982, I believe, and... We were number three on the list. It was Children's Hospital, the American Cancer Society, and at that time we were known as Alternatives to Abortion, ATA. And people wanted to know who are these people. You know, the people were basically they were showing their support to an organization that are helping a young woman experiencing un, an unplanned pregnancy. Um, so in that way, we got twenty five thousand dollars. Which, when I look back at it, wasn't that much, but it was um, oh, it was like a million dollars to us. We were out doing our bake sales, and, and I said, I'm, my relatives would see me coming, and they'd say, oh, my gosh, here she comes. She's selling balloons or something. Um, but with that, we started going to the banks, and um, they would say, well, how much money do you have coming in monthly? Well, it, it depends on how many little fundraisers we have, and what about this, and what about that? And we were laughed out of many, many banks, unfortunately, because, you know, here we are asking for money to buy a home, and we really didn't have any monthly um, money's coming in. Well, finally, we found a, a savings and loan that said, you know what? Okay, you've got the passion. I'm going to take this chance. Don't disappoint me. Don't make me look like a fool. And that was then in 1983. We, this is what we bought, our Genesis house here in Bellevue. And um, our opening day was June the 5th. We had a house mother. We had everything ready to go. And on June 5th, someone came and not was pounding on the door, and this, this irate woman said, okay, you want my daughter, you, you promote this kind of thing, here she is. All her stuff's down at the bottom of the steps. She's yours. Do what you want with her. And off she drove away. And when she said all of her, her dresser was down on the, on the bottom of the steps, her bicycle, she was 12 years old. And... Her mother didn't want anything to do with her. She had gone to a, a priest, and the priest told them about um, this home that was going to be opened up, you know, for young women who are pregnant, but 12 years old. And at that point in time, we didn't even have a license. We, everyone we called um, to find out what do we have to do, what, what do we need to do to, to open up a residential program. Um, the last one that was open was Rosalia, and, so that, and that was in the 50s. And everyone kept saying, well, I, we have no idea, you know, I, I, we, you know, as far as, do you need a license? No, I don't think so. Do you need to do this? No, I don't think so. Well, once we opened up, that was June, June the 5th, our house mother, who just couldn't believe there was this little 12-year-old girl, quit. She said, I didn't think it would be this emotional. I can't, I can't handle this kind of thing. I, I can't do this. I know I can't. So 
as we brought all the girls' stuff upstairs onto the porch, we had this 12-year-old girl. And what we did was we took, took turns. It was the three of us. We took turns taking her home at night until we could find another house mother, which we did. And, um, and then she was able to stay here. And as word got out, we, we became full. We take eight young women here at, at a time. And we had a full house in, in a matter of three months. Um, it, it's amazing when you see this young woman walking up those steps, all of those steps. And then I want you to know that we were very young at that time when we bought this house, and those steps meant nothing to us. Now we're going, oh, geez. But to see this little girl walk in, no matter how old she was, whether she was 17, 16, 12, 23, it was like this little dog with a, with a tail between its legs. They don't know us. They didn't know anything about it. All they knew is that they were homeless and they didn't have anywhere else to go. And over the course of time, we just saw them blossom. You know, as, as we worked with them with counseling, um, we just, they just blossomed right before us. Um, trust, I think, is a, is a huge, huge thing, you know, in building relationships. Um, and that's what we did with these young women. We were here for them. They weren't here for us. And that's how we've always, always felt. What we saw in, during this time, though, was education. What are we going to do? The, most of the young women were teenagers. And... Um, they, they just, their education was just stopped. And I thought, you can't stop their education. We've got, to, we've got to provide education to them. So we decided we'd open a school, pretend school, but we were going to provide the education for these young women. As I called the different school districts, they said, oh, absolutely not. First of all, we don't have that problem in our school district. And we could never, um, you know, pay, have, it, have another, someone else teach these, these girls. And I said, it would be absolutely free. The teachers would be certified. Um, we would meet whatever restrictions or qualifications that you had. We can, we'll use your books. Um, the teachers can give us their, their tests, with however they want to do it. And once the, I think the key word was free. And little by little, we started getting different school districts coming in. The girls, the one problem we had was um, the Pittsburgh School District. They wouldn't allow us because they had uh, Leche School, which was for... Um, troubled kids, pregnant young girls, um, so we were not allowed to, to teach, provide education for them. But all the suburb schools, the schools in the suburbs, we were able to. We had Shaler, we had um, Avonworth, all of them, so in Fox Chapel, and we pr started providing education for this young woman. In most cases, they were behind in their, in their schooling because they were going through this turmoil of, they found out they were pregnant, what are they going to do? Um, before they tell their parents, that kind of thing. And um, so they were behind. And on a one-to-one -one, one -one basis, having a teacher working with an individual student, they just, they just flourished in, in their education too. We were able to go back to where they started to having the problems and work from that point in, in time. And all of them went right back to their school when, once their, you know, the pregnancy was done. Um, they would go back to school, and then a lot of times they were even further ahead of their class um, because of that individual attention that they had. Um, we also provided um, for, for young women that, you know, were having the babies here or those that were coming in that needed um, cribs and playpens and diapers and all of that. We started up providing that free of charge to the young women. Um, so we had, and unfortunately, we had all this, our distribution center was on the third floor of the house. So we had even more steps. I would always say, bring it in, take it out, bring it in, take it out. But we were able to provide that service for the young women. As time went on, we started doing more and more programming, um, pre prenatal care, you know, education, prenatal education, parenting classes, that sort of thing. One of the biggest things and wonderful opportunity that we had is uh, the Swickley Hospital School of Nursing asked if they could do their, um, that, you know, the, their one term in, you know, with the student nurses was um, childbirth. And so they came here and provided pro classes for the girls. They did prenatal classes, again, birthing classes, Lamaze, that sort of thing. And so every um, core, every, every semester would have a new group come in. And what was so exciting about that was these were young people, many of them the ages of the girls that were here, and we had quite a few go on to, into nursing. 
three of them graduated from Sewickley School of Nursing. And it was because of, of that contact, that first contact that they had with them. And that was very exciting. And would you believe still, the, the, the School of Nursing still provides education here. They come for their, they come for the students. And now it's interesting because it's not just young women, it's young women and young men in the nursing um, school. But um, as we decided to do more and more programming, we thought, well, if this works, why not um, start ha you know, having other kind of classes and getting people that are qualified as opposed to us kind of piecemealing and putting things together. And we'd have nurses come in um, and, and volunteer. Our volunteer base was just unbelievable. People, the, the, the outreach that came to Genesis from the, the people in, in Pittsburgh was just unbelievable. Donations, not a, as, as well as teachers, as well as um, instructors for different types of programming. And what was happening is I, I became very concerned that Genesis became kind of a, a what do you call it, a fishbowl, you know, because there's constant people coming in and going out and that sort of thing. And down the street on, on North Fremont, there was a little store that um, it was, I, I, I can't remember the name, Frank's store, no, John's, John's Market. And apparently it was there for years and years and years where the father had it and it was passed down to the daughter and, and that sort of thing. And I kept saying, we've got to get this place. We've got to get this place. Um, and, and, so, and I said, if it ever is up for sale, we've got to try to get this. Well, we could move all this kind of thing down there. It was a two-story building. And, um, and it had two apartments upstairs. And uh, one apartment was rented to uh, an elderly gentleman who has been there for, uh, when we got it, he was, I think, in his late 70s. And he had been there forever. But John's Market went up for sale. Unfortunately, we didn't realize it, and it was um, bought from under us. We just couldn't believe that, that this was supposed to be our building. Um, but what happened is a man came, and, and, and he bought it, and he was going to make different offices, and he did all this renovation to the downstairs, and so he was going to, I think they were like four different offices were going to um, go in there. Unfortunately, the, during that time, the man became ill and really didn't want to be saddled with it and he put it on the market um well basically we went down there and said if you ever want to sell this place let us know and we got a call and he said that this is he wanted to do this so off we went uh, and in the meantime we already had paid off genesis house we had our 25 year mortgage and we this was in 1993 so we bought this in 83 and within 10 years we had because of the donations and whatnot we had uh, paid off the house, so we off we went to get a mortgage for that. Well, unfortunately, we had some problems um, with the borough, you know, and, and so we had to fight that whole thing. And um, But we, we did indeed buy the house, I mean buy the center, and we had the distribution center on the first floor. Well, not only was it the first floor, it went down to the basement. Um, we just had tons and tons of, of, of items that we distributed, so that, that our outreach um, group is growing by leaps and, and bounds. We had our, some of our classes down there, and what we were seeing was that we were um, starting to really, we were getting too big for that downstairs. So we decided when, when Bill, the man that um, had the one apartment, we could never ask him to leave. And unfortunately, um, in his 80s, he became ill, and he, they moved him to a nursing home. And the poor room, probably the apartment didn't even get cool, and we started going out for money and contributions to make that a learning center. And we did the renovations. Um, we got money for that. You know, we took out loans and whatnot. And um, we, we made that into the Genesis. We call it the TLC, the Learning Center. And that's where all of our programming takes place. We have childbirth. We have MOZ classes, prenatal care. Um, our New Beginnings program is what it is, and it has uh, um, taking care of a newborn taking care of a toddler, that sort of thing. And um, it is just, uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. I wish you could go down and, and see it. It's just very, very um, impressive. But so much goes on there um, as far as the teaching, the program. We have a computer room where the girls go down, can use, and this is not just our girls, not just the eight girls, but um, girls, young women from all over the city go down there. Um, as, as unfortunately as our, you know, as over the years, our clientele has changed too, and, and they have different types of problems. They're not no longer that teenage girl, but they're a, they're in their twenties. Most of them that, that we we work with, um, 
we've added some um, programming with, with addiction because that's that's a problem. We have um, some mental health programs that we have we have down there too because that too is an issue. But it just it just hums down there. And um, so when you when we started out with three women and a hotline that um, had five clients maybe a month maybe um, to what we do now it's we work with over six thousand. Um, young women and men and their families a year. I, I, I fail to even say that we also have a, a very large center down in Washington. This too started in 83 and it, they just, they're doing a wonderful, wonderful job. And in Pittsburgh, there's a lot more different programs that are offered to um, the young women here. But in, in, in Washington, we're really one of the biggest programs and only program that does this type of thing. They too have programming, they have a distribution center, they just do wonderful, wonderful work. And again, the community supports them tremendously too. I want to mention about the um, our Learn to Earn program, and that is down in our Learning Center. And there's all the series of programs that are um, available down there. Again, like I said, the, the Lamaze classes, the, um, the newborn baby classes, um, if they take all these classes, and finish finish them, they get baby bucks. Every class they uh, they come, they they earn baby bucks. And with these baby bucks, they can earn. If they take all the programs, they can get a new, brand new crib, brand new mattress, and a brand new car seat. And so that's what we call it, the learn to earn. And um, basically, anything else left over, they can, they can get um, our slightly used um, items that we have at the center. So everything we do is, is trying to make that young woman become the best she can possibly be, that she can be the best parent that she can possibly be. Um, Genesis is also um, we're a licensed social service agency. We're a licensed um, adoption agency. We're a licensed um, uh, foster care agency. I always say if we're going to have another license, it's definitely going to be our liquor license because I don't think we can do it without that. But so much good is, is happening here at Genesis. I'm so proud to be a part of it and, and, and be a part of, of, of the, the staff that we have. They're so dedicated and they truly love what they're doing and it shows every day.